Hello everyone. As I've probably mentioned maybe at least a few times now, before I decided to go to library school, I practiced for over 20 years as a corporate lawyer. So the topic we cover in this class is probably my favorite of the entire semester. Hopefully you'll all find it interesting and useful too, even if you don't plan on becoming a corporate lawyer. Anyway, today we're going to talk about research tools and techniques that are developed exclusively for corporate lawyers, specifically transactional corporate lawyers, you know, the kind of lawyers who do deals. We'll divide this rather large topic into two main parts. For the first part on this video lecture, we'll talk about the topic of company information. What is it? How do you find it? And what do you do with it once you do find it? Then for the second part of the lecture in class, I'll introduce you to the kind of transactional resources that corporate lawyers use when they're drafting agreements. Also in class, we'll do some research exercise so you can experiment with the resources that we use to find company information and then later on the resources that we use to actually draft corporate agreements. All right, so let's start with company information. So what is company information and why do lawyers need to find it? Well, we'll spend the rest of the video lecture discussing that, but in general, company information is background information about a company. Things like its history, its financials, the industry that it's in, the risks that it faces, including litigation. We'll also talk about why you would need to find company information as a lawyer, or to put it another way, what do lawyers do with company information after they find it? Finally, we'll talk about where do you find company information. Fortunately, there's lots of good resources to find company information, and some of them are free. All right, so here's a little bit more detail on what is company information. As I said, a simple definition is background information about a company. Let's take a minute, though, to look at the specific kinds of information that you would usually include if you were creating a company report. So in the first section of your company report, you would give general information, the name of the company, where it's incorporated, what state, whether it's public or private, where are its headquarters, what industry is it in, a little bit about the history, does it have a great story like Apple, you know, founded in a garage, or whatever the history is, that's always interesting to put in a paragraph or two about that in a company report. And then something about the structure of the company, the hierarchical structure, is it one of these companies that has a parent with hundreds of subsidiaries under it in different states and different countries, or is it a simple structure where it's got maybe one parent with two subsidiaries underneath it? Obviously, that's interesting information for various different purposes if you're evaluating a company, whether it's a big public company or a small company owned by a family, for example. You'd also want to include the ticker symbol, which is just the symbol that it trades under if it's a publicly traded company. A publicly traded company just means that it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. For the most part, a private company, you'd have to do a private stock transaction. And that makes a difference because of the disclosure obligations that public companies have. So there's vastly more information available for public companies than there is for private companies. A little bit about the employees. Does it have tens of thousands of employees or is it a mom and pop shop with 50? And I said before, what is the industry? Because that will affect your analysis of the various challenges that a company's facing. If they're in a very competitive industry or if it's an industry that's going through regulatory challenges, challenges at the particular time, that's going to matter when you're evaluating whether you want to enter into a transaction with that company or not. Then you go on to financial information, and most of this, if it's a public company, you can get right from the SEC's website, Edgar. So you would look at the annual report, which is a 10K. There you'd look at the income statement, the balance sheet. You'd also go ahead and look at publicly available stock market report. How is the stock price doing? Has it gone up? Has it gone down? Is it stable? How is it doing in comparison to its competitors? You'd take a look at the board of directors. Is it stable? Does it have a good board of directors? Does it have outside directors and inside directors? Does it have experts? You'd take a look at the executive officers. Again, is there stability in that? Has the CEO and the COO been around for a while? Have they just brought somebody in? new and we don't know how it's going to work out. Those are the kinds of things that you want to analyze. And then you'd look at recent key developments. Again, all this is easily available if you have a public company because all of this has to be filed in their various disclosure statements. We'll spend more time talking about that in the class lecture. But have there been any significant acquisitions recently? Are they selling? pieces of themselves? Are they spinning off? Or are they selling divisions? Have they entered into new markets? Or have they introduced a new product? They could be good developments or bad developments, but things that you want to analyze. You need to take a look at their litigation risk. You need to know whether they're undergoing any significant regulatory investigation or whether one is likely to come down the pike. For example, if there's uh, regulators going into their competitors on a particular issue, you can be sure they're likely to hit your client soon as well. 
And then what competitive challenges are they facing? If there's Samsung and the you know, Apple's come out with a new iPhone, is that going to adversely affect Samsung's bottom line and vice versa? And I would say probably yes. Industry profile, look at the industry. Is it an industry that's dying? Is it an industry that's on the rise? Do they have very active regulators? Like I work for an insurance industry where the regulators were unbelievably active. And then I work for a food management company where the Department of Agriculture was asleep at the switch. So that also depends on how you're going to analyze a company, whether they have significant regulatory challenges that they face, both from the money that they have to spend in defending themselves from the challenges and and also the ease of going about their day-to-day -day business. All right, so I think that's enough information on what company information is. Let's move on to why you as a lawyer need to find company information, because it doesn't seem like first blush like something that a lawyer is necessarily going to get involved in. It's not reading statutes or writing agreements or um, filing documents with a court, but you do need to find company information, and I'll explain why. Basically, you need to have a thorough understanding of your client's business and the industry that they operate in before you can give competent advice. It's as simple as that. I think this applies equally to corporate and litigation clients. If you're a corporate attorney, you need to understand your client's business so that you can represent them in business negotiations and transactions and you can tailor agreement language to meet your client's interests. Just take an example for what I used to do when I was a finance lawyer, when you have to draft the S-1. And the S-1 is the, the offering document that you would file with the SEC if you were taking a company public. So in this circumstance, you're going to need to know just about everything about that company. Not only so you can give good advice on what disclosures are necessary in the S-1, because it's also going to fall on you to describe the company in detail, including the disclosure of significant risks that's facing the company. And you have to know about the company's regulatory, competitive, and industry challenges. Now, that's a complicated public deal, but even if you're doing something as simple as drafting an employment agreement for a client, a private little company, you still need to understand that client's business so that you can craft the provisions in the agreement to really meet your client's needs. If you were a litigation attorney, same theory applies. You need to know all background information about your client and its business and the risks that it's facing in order to develop trial strategies and to consider settlement offers for your client as the litigation goes on. So the other main reason why you would need company information is because it helps you to get new clients. And that's what lawyers are always trying to do, of course. They're working on one transaction and they're worrying about the next one. And the way this works is if you understand a potential client's business needs, you can position yourself to meet these needs and differentiate yourself from your competitors. So let's just take one example. Imagine you're meeting with a potential new litigation client and you're able to discuss potential litigation threats that you see coming down the pike and you can tell the client what they might do to mitigate these threats. If you're impressive enough, you're likely to get that piece of business. If you're a corporate lawyer and you were meeting with a potential new public company client, you could follow the same strategy and talk about a potential acquisition threat and how you could help the client fend off that threat. All right, so hopefully I've now convinced you that you do need to find and use company information. So now it makes sense to talk about how do we find it? Where do we go to look for company information? And fortunately, there are many high quality sources of comprehensive company information, particularly while you're here at BLS, we have some great resources. The sources range from specialized corporate information electronic databases that are available to you here through the BLS library to sources that are freely available on the internet. And I'll show you how to use both. So depending on where you end up, you might have access to an expensive product like Bloomberg Law, and you might not. Here's some of the big sources of company information. Bloomberg Law, as I mentioned, there's Business Insights, which is a database by the publisher Gale, Business Source Premier, which is a competitive product by the publisher EBSCO. There's Hoover's Company Reports. It's an old line print resource, which has now been incorporated. You could get it on Westlaw or Lexis. There's Edgar, which is the SEC's electronic database. And then there's Yahoo Finance, which is another free resource. So Edgar and Yahoo Finance are both free and they're good and bad for all sorts of reasons that we'll talk about as we get there. All right, so let's start with Bloomberg Law. Let me just start by saying that Bloomberg Law is an excellent resource for corporate attorneys. So good, in fact, that if you had Bloomberg Law and nothing else, you'd still be fine as a transactional lawyer. To get company information on Bloomberg Law, first select Browse and then Business Intelligence Center. Now scroll down a bit and select Company Screener. 
And once you do that, you just start putting in the company that you're interested in as best you can. Don't worry if you don't have the exact corporate name because Bloomberg will suggest companies based on what you input and you can choose the one you want. So here I put in Disney and it's suggesting all sorts of different Disney entities, but I'm going to choose the parent company, the Walt Disney Company, and then it's going to take me to a Walt Disney Company information summary page. Once I get on this landing page for the Walt Disney Company, there's a bunch of different things I can do. So here you can see it breaking down the company information by topic. So I can click into any of these hyperlinks and get detailed information. For example, management profiles, it's going to bring up detailed information about the board of directors and the officers or I can go over here and click into these charts and get very specific information about the stock performance the Disney stock so it'll tell me day-by-day -day information year-to-date information events that occurred that caused the stock to either rise or fall in price you get the idea then down here is litigation analytics which I'm not going to talk about now because we're going to come back to in a minute and talk about in great detail just scroll it down to see what's on the rest of the page here. You can see that over to the left, there's all news. And again, remember, this is news now just about Disney. So it's legal news and regular news, but just focused on the Walt Disney Company. So you get a full 360 degree picture of the company by just looking at this landing page. And then over to the right, there's just some biographical information. Where is it incorporated? How many employees does it have? Who are its auditors? Some contact information, kind of all good stuff if you're trying to get your arms around who the company is and where do they exist. But for now, let's go back to this litigation analytics tool because it's really great and it's kind of unique to Bloomberg. So we'll spend a minute on it. To get into the litigation analytics, other than just the sort of summary information that you see on that landing page, just kind of hover over anywhere in this litigation analytics section. And then this will appear, this link you click on to launch the analytics. Once I do that, then I'm going to get this page. And there's a bunch of different things I can do. I'm just going to show you one example of a search that you could run and, and the results that you would get. So here I said to Bloomberg, I want to search for five years, so the past five years of litigation involving the Walt Disney Company. And I want to look at the law firms that have represented Disney during the last five years. As you can see, I could also choose the case types that Disney was involved in or the jurisdiction of the cases that Disney was involved in. But I'm looking at law firms. And then you'll see that it pulls up this pie chart of all the different law firms that have represented Disney for the last five years. If I want to get even more specific than that, I see this is Arnold and Porter. They represent Disney most often. Maybe I want to know what types of cases they handle for Disney. Maybe I'm going to try and steal some business. Say I'm an IP attorney. I do copyright and trademark and things like that. Maybe I can go after Arnold and Porter's business. But no, sadly, that's not going to work because Arnold and Porter represents Disney on ADA cases, Americans with Disabilities Act. So I'm not going to be able to do anything about stealing their business if I'm an IP attorney. Then if I want to get even more specific, say I'm interested for whatever reason I'm defending a case and I want to see how Arnold and Porter handles things, I can actually click into this blue pie chart. And then that's going to bring up biographical information about all of these cases that have been filed. And then if I have a particular case that I'm interested in, I want to see real specific information, I click into the name and it brings up the docket. Okay, so moving on from dockets, now we're going to talk about actually how do you get company report information, which is what you'll be doing for assignment three. You'll be creating a company report on a public company. To create a company report on Bloomberg Law is actually really easy. All you do is go back up to the top of the page and click on this create report and then you're given a choice of a quick report or a custom report. I'm going to suggest you always say custom report because you don't know what you want and what you don't want and what's relevant and what isn't. So better you get a longer report. It's easier to ignore things than to worry about whether you should have included something and didn't. So once I do that, then it's going to tell me all the different things that I can include in my report. And again, I'm just really over-inclusive. I include everything. And then if I decide I'm not particularly interested in debt and equity offerings, for example, I just don't read that section. That's easy enough to do. Once I do that, I just click Generate Report and Bloomberg does the rest. Here I have an 87-page, very detailed report. To be honest, this report alone would be all you'd need for a general background on your client, either for competitive intelligence, if you're trying to get business or keep business, or because you need to understand your client's business to represent them in a litigation or a corporate transaction. I'm going to show you some other sources as well, but really, for most general purposes, any one of these good high-quality reports is all that you're going to need. So the work's done for you, which is great. All right, so let's move on to some of the other databases where you can get company information. 
This is Business Insights. As I mentioned, this is a specialized corporate database that we have here through the BLS library. And the easiest way to get to this is just to go to our library homepage and you see there's our catalog and all our other great resources. But here you can get to Business Insights and Business Source by clicking on this databases by subject. And then go ahead and click on Corporate Resource and Securities Law Databases. And then you'll see right there, there's Business Source, which we'll talk about in a minute. And here's Business Insights, which we're going to look at right now. Once I go to Business Insights, this time I'm going to put in the ticker, DIS for Disney, and then Search. And then it's going to pull up all the information that it has about Disney. You can see right here, if I want to just take a quick look at this, is kind of that high level information like was available to me on Bloomberg Law, the history, the chronology, investment reports, rankings, etc. I can also take a look at the SWAT reports Business Insights has for Disney. I'll tell you more about SWAT reports, a really useful piece of company information, in a minute when we take a look at Business Source, the EBSCO company information database. Or I can go ahead and click on the name link and then it's going to pull up. In essence, the same kind of thing that we saw in Bloomberg with this summary page and all the interesting background information that I might need to get. What industry is it in? How well is it doing? You can look above and see some summary financial information. And then if I want detailed information, I just go ahead and I click into what I'm interested in. Do I want to look at financials? Am I interested in market share? Do I want to know about their legal issues? What litigations are they facing? What risks are facing Disney at this particular time? So I can click on any of those. And then I can also click on this. Remember I mentioned about the subsidiary structure. Obviously Disney's got a really complicated one. So I'd click on there and it would give me a picture of the company and the subsidiaries that are underneath it, which kind of helps you to understand the way that the company is operating. So now I'm going back to that database by subject list. This time I'm going to click on Business Source Premier, which is the EBSCO database. And then I can put in the Disney name again and say search. Once I do that, it brings up all the different reports and analysis that it has of the Disney company. And one thing that's good on EBSCO, it provides these SWOT reports, which is basically, it gives you like a quick idea of the company's strengths, its weaknesses, the opportunities that are coming down the pike and the threats that it faces. And the way to get to them is you just go over here on the left and use this show more and then choose what it is that you're interested in. Are, am I interested in an industry profile, a market report, or here I'm talking about SWAT. So I click the SWAT and then it's just going to pull them up. And they do these periodically. They do them like every three or four months for big public companies. So I can get the most recent one. It's a pretty detailed report. And that's what a SWAT looks like. As I mentioned, it's kind of a box, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then it goes into each of those components in more detail. Okay, moving on. So to get to Hoover's company reports, which is another really great resource that's been around, as I mentioned, for a long time, you can get there from Westlaw or Lexus. So from the Westlaw landing page, I just start typing in Hoover's and you can see right there on the top, it's going to suggest Hoover's company profiles, which is in fact what I'm looking for. So I click into that and it immediately brings up this template. So I'm gonna put in the company name I'm interested in, Disney. And then you can see what a company report looks like from Hoover's on Westlaw. It gives you the same kind of summary information, the ticker, the exchange where it's traded, and this goes on and on and on. It's about a nine or 10 page report. And the process is basically the same on Lexus from the landing page. I'm gonna start typing in Hoover and Lexus is going to suggest either the Hoover company reports basic record or the in-depth record. And again, my suggestion to you is always go for the in-depth record because it's more easy to ignore what you don't need than to wonder what you might be missing. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at Edgar. Edgar is an animal uh, unto itself. It's not like anything else. That being said, it's an invaluable tool for finding company information and even more wonderful, it's totally free. And that's because Edgar is the website of a federal government agency. It's the Security and Exchange Commission or the SEC. Just for a tiny little bit of background, SEC regulations require every public company to make filings when the company enters into any material corporate transaction, like a merger or a, a, even a big employment agreement, like with their CEO, or certainly when they do something like go public. Aside from material transactions, every public company also has to make periodic filings throughout every year so that stockholders and potential stockholders can know about the company's financial condition, its legal condition, its competitive condition, et cetera, et cetera. So you 
you probably have heard of these periodic filings. The annual filings are 10Ks, the quarterly filings are 10Qs, and there's lots of other periodic filings that we really don't have time to talk about here, and I'm sure you don't want to anyway, unless you're like me and you love this stuff. So as you can imagine, with all of these filings, there's a huge amount of information available on Edgar about every public company, and I mean a huge amount. It's really voluminous. In fact, if you're investigating a public company, I think going to Edgar and getting the company's latest 10K, or the annual report, and a few of the latest 10Qs, the quarterly reports, is really a good idea always. And the reason why I say that is because the securities regulations force companies to disclose things that they would rather not disclose. And they're not going to do it in their puff pieces, their, their PR pieces, their company reports, and their statements that they're putting out through their marketing department. So it's a good thing for you to go to read these things that they're saying, the things that their lawyers are making them say, rather than the things that their marketing people want them to say. So it's a great idea. Of course, the downside is, is that these documents are full of legalese and accountant ease, so they can be really difficult to read. But as I said, since the securities law mandate they disclose things they'd rather not, you definitely want to take a look at the things that they're disclosing in these particular documents. All right, so to find a company filing on Egger, the easiest way is just go ahead and use that URL that I put at the bottom of the slide, or you can just put in SEC Edgar into any search engine and this particular page is going to pop up. Definitely before you go onto Edgar, you want to have the ticker for a company because that's the easiest way to get information. So here I'm going to go ahead and put in DIS for Disney and then search. Once I do this, you can see pretty easily it pulls up every single thing that has been filed on behalf of Disney. And I can see there's the latest 10Q or quarterly report that was filed. I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit to get the 10K. There it is. I don't have to scroll down too much. And to look at the document, I actually click on this documents link. And then once I do that, here they're showing you that there's the Form 10-K, which is the annual statement, and then there's all the various exhibits that are attached to that, and then there's these red document links. All you have to do is find where it says Form 10-K, and then go ahead and click on this link. And once you do that, it actually pulls up the 10-K, and you can look at it, and these documents are usually like 100 pages, but they're everything that the company needs to tell to give full and adequate disclosure under the securities law. So if you read through this, you're really going to understand where the company is and whether it's facing any problems or not. So the last one that I'm going to mention, which I really love, this is a completely free resource. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's been around for quite a while and I use it all the time. So here again, I just go to the URL, you can see it on the bottom left of the page there, put in the ticker DIS, and it's going to bring up, this is starting to look familiar, the basic summary information. How's it doing stock price wise in the market? What are the basic background information you can see? And, and then one thing that I just wanted to point out, because this is available on Yahoo Finance, and I don't know where else you could really find it quite as easily as you can on Yahoo Finance, and that's this historical prices tool. So you click on that, and then it just lets you put in any date you want, as long as the company has been publicly traded. So I put in a date over 50 years ago, 1964, June 12, 1964. It's actually my birthday. And I can see what was Disney stock trading at on that particular day. So, you know, if you're ever doing estate work or something, and you need to price a particular stock when the decedent bought it, or whatever the information is that you need to find, Yahoo Finance is a great place to go for that. So that's it. Now you know everything that you need to know about finding company information, really. So often in ALR we say, oh, we can only touch the surface of a subject, or it takes a lifetime of practice to become really efficient, like finding administrative regulations or adjudications. But for company information, this really is pretty much it. You now know the resources, and you can see the process is fairly automated. Get a good database like Bloomberg and your work is pretty much done for you. In class, the first thing we're going to do is an exercise on finding company information. So you'll have the opportunity to actually use the resources that I introduced to you in this video. Then we're going to switch gears and we'll talk about the resources that are available to corporate transactional lawyers who are drafting things, drafting agreements, drafting releases. If you were a litigator, you'd have to draft and review settlement agreements, so you could use it for that. After we do that, then we'll do another exercise so you get some experience using those resources as well. Don't forget to take the week 10 quiz and submit your results, and I will see you in class.